So this video uh, definitely needed to be in that social media corner that uh, Valerie uh, presented because it was really, really trending hot over the weekend. Welcome to Headlines. My name is Kafui Day. And four people were arrested for attacking the police in the West Re Western region in an alleged case of extortion referred, and they've been referred to the Police Professional Standards Bureau for investigation. So a press release came out based on uh, what you just saw yesterday. And let me just give you a couple of details on that and I'll come to my guest. So on the 9th of March, 2023, the Axim Divisional Police Patrol Team reported an attack on the team that seized the magazine of a service rifle uh, together with some mobile phones belonging to the police officers. An intelligence operation was immediately launched after the report to get the suspects arrested. On 28th March 2023, after about three weeks of the intelligence operation, four men, Kojo Sia, alias Muse, Emmanuel Mensa, alias Kofi Asamoah, Maxwell Kujo, and Ajabu Haruna Disawu were arrested for their suspected involvement in the attack. A search conducted at the residence of Kwame Atua Sareni, prime suspect who is still on the run, led to the retrieval of three pump-action shotguns, also one pump-action shotgun, two machetes, and eight um, BB refill cartridges were retrieved from the suspect's unregistered Honda CRV vehicle. Other items ret retrieved from the suspects include two live refilled BB cartridges and one unregistered motorbike. <laughs> On uh, 1st of April 2023, while investigations were ongoing to get the remaining suspects arrested, the attention of the police was drawn to a video footage in which the said police personnel, members of the Axim Patrol team, are pleading with members of the gang while the gang is alleging extortion by the police officers. Allegation of extortion against the police officers has been referred to the Police Professional Standards Bureau for investigation. All suspects in the reported attack on the patrol team who had been arrested have been put before court and have been remanded in custody. Efforts are continuing to get the remaining suspects arrested. Signed, Assistant Commissioner of Police, Director of Public Affairs, Grace Ansa Akrofi. So that's the development on that video that you saw and has been trending over the weekend. My guests will have their bite of this. Professor Daniel Bruce is a clinical psychologist and a lecturer as well. And Dr. Anani Jinde is also a lecturer, a corporate governance expert, a journalist, and a lawyer. And so I will start by saying good morning to both of you. And then I'll start the conversations with uh, Dr. Jinde. What do you make of that video that you saw? And um, yeah, what are your feelings on the, the action of the police to get to the bottom of the matter? Yeah, thank you very much, Kafui. And very good morning to your yeah, viewers all over the world. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of fans eh? Thank you. from here to America. So no, a lot of people watch. We're global. And uh, let me also say good morning to my people back home mm -hmm. at Kintampo. Yes, and, I uh, and my mother's place, Bamboy. So. The famous Bamboy. No, no, <laughs> so, Kafui, my first reaction was uh, some level of uh, disappointment. I was really disappointed because uh, if you look at the venue where this thing took place, it means it is a Galamsey site, I mm -hmm. presume. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think the police 
officer went there. In the first place, he's going there. Was it sanctioned by the police command? Mm. Was it an operation that was sanctioned by the higher officers or not? And from the narrative uh, that uh, he was shouting, sir, you are my man. You are my... It means there's some familiarity there. After which he was also accused of uh, uh, taking monies from them. So you see, if you are an official, the moment you take money from whoever is involved, you've compromised your, your, your neutrality and your authority. So that was why they had the audacity to tell him that, well, with giving you money, what else? So all this goes to highlight the importance of public officers living above reproach and acting with integrity. But on the other side, he was very smart. You know, looking at the danger he found, he found himself, if he had resisted, if he tried to play the macho, I think uh, he would have been uh, something else now. So he was smart. At least he's alive to help out with investigations to get to the bottom of this. But I think that the fight against Galamse, I think uh, we are trying our best, but our best is not good enough. And one danger about this Galamse culture is that the moment they come to a place, the moment they begin to operate in that particular place, you see violence going up. They become radicalized. And they become armed, which is a national security threat. So Galamse, it's not enough to stop the Galamse, but the aftermath, the consequences of Galamse, the security threat, the radicalization of our youth. That is where my concern is. And the matter has also been referred to the Police Professional Standards Bureau. Mm -hmm. I hope they do a good job. But my experience with them, especially their office in Accra, uh, has not been very pleasant and very impressive. I had a case and I had to go there. And the way they were behaving, it appears it's because the matter involves one of them. They did not take me seriously. So if they, that is the way they are still behaving, I hope they've changed now. If that is what, that's the way they are still behaving, what I saw last year, then I don't think this will end anywhere. But I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. Now we have a new regime. I hope the right things will be done. But if what I experienced last year at the police, at their, uh, at their office in Kokomlemle uh, 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 mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. If that is the way they behave, then this thing will go nowhere. Mm -hmm. From my personal experience. But I think uh, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's see to it that the right thing is done. Investigations are still going on, so it will not be proper for us to start passing judgment uh, before the investigation comes out. And I also expect the police administration, whatever level they are, their investigation takes them to. They should let the people know. Because we are all interested in knowing how the outcome will be so that we can all learn some important lessons from it. So these are my initial thoughts on this matter. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Jinde. Uh, Professor Bruce, yeah. uh, put your psychologist hat on. What would make somebody who is obviously... Why would you record this stuff and then have it shared? I mean, I'm assuming that the people who recorded this business were not the police officers. They were probably members of the man's the gang. And <sighs> yeah, I think they also want to show that they are on top, on top of the police. Yeah, they have a power the police, so they have the territory to themselves, and they should have asked them permission before coming. That is what they have shown. You see, the police did not exhibit the highest standard of professionalism demanded of them. That's why you see what happened. The people you are dealing with, excuse me to say, if you have definition of intelligence on them, you know that there are people we classify as people suffering from acquired mental retardation. Because of that, they cannot act purposefully. They cannot think rationally, and they cannot deal effectively with the environment. If you are engaging in an act, you know very well that the law is against it, and yet you do it. It is there's something questionable about your intelligence. And so those people, once they are exhibiting the characteristics of acquired mental retardation, they will do whatever they want to do to show that, yes, it can also be there to be recognized. That is what is happening. 
So if people who cannot think rationally first to know that what we are doing is against the law, you must be very tactful and highly professional in dealing with those people. You don't just go into their hands, look at what they are doing. When they were, they were happy and they recorded that and showing it to the public, if they want to show that you the police don't have response for you again. For them, they, they start to lose anything, nothing. So the, the, the whole psychology behind is that you are dealing with people who are exhibiting characteristics of sub-average intelligence. And those characteristics, you see it among them. So if you are dealing with such people, you must be very careful. For them, they are already on the ground. They will drag you to the ground to know that we are equal. They care less the consequences. That's all. And the police, you see, they must exhibit the highest form of professionalism and keep to their game and the standard. There's a difference between the Ghana police and their counterpart, the gendarmes in the French countries. A policeman will stop a vehicle. He, the policeman, will have to walk to the driver sitting behind the wheel, private or public or commercial. But when you go to Togo, just our neighbors here or Cote d'Ivoire, when you see a gendarme blow the police, you will see down there. It is you, the driver, or whoever seems to be offending in a way, who have to come and explain yourself. But if you're a policeman, you have reduced yourself to a standard. I am rather interested in taking something from you than allowing the law to be applied to you. You go to what you have, where we are seeing right now. So the police, they must be up there again. I'm happy. They have to identify this as a matter of uh, professionalism. So they must apply the professional ethics to the highest level. And we don't see these things again. It's a disgrace to all of us that our policemen, who we all have confidence in that in case of trouble you will protect us, kneeling down and begging this. No, no, no. The police, they must up their game. There's a verse in the Bible, I think it's in Proverbs. Um, that says uh, no it's not a, it's in Ecclesiastes a live dog is better than a dead lion yeah I mean the, that that man begging for his life it was it was it was the smart thing to do right? yeah it's the smart thing to do he told that no <laughs> my life was in danger so let me surrender to their will by raising their self-esteem that oh even a policeman is begging us mm. he applies psychology on them so yeah, 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 he's begging us, so let's leave him. If he hadn't done that, oh, they would have finished him. So the best thing to do is to raise somebody's self-esteem, which he does not deserve, and you go free. We should applaud the policeman for applying that psychology. <laughs> that is what saved him. The thoughts of our psychologist and lecturer, uh, Professor Daniel Bruce, on the standing video uh, that uh, just took over social media by storm over the weekend and the people have been arrested one of them is on the run and hopefully the police with their intelligence led operations will do uh, the right thing and flush the man out of the system but it just shows you that galamse the effects of this thing uh, this fight against galamse is is, is is crazy it's not just the water and uh, the environment you know it's just security as dr jindy spoke about and other um, at the levels of violence going up, uh, young people going against the system. It's, 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 it's like a breakdown. It's really, really worrying. So, yeah. Kudos to the police. Uh, let's find out how things will go. And we'll keep our, eye and, uh, our eyes and our ears on the issue. Okay, so uh, before we jump off this issue, I'm going to be speaking right now on the phone to get some more professional insights into this particular issue. My phone is, is being allergic to me this morning, but you lie. You obey your master. Okay, so on the line, I do have um, Dr. Victor Doke. He's a uh, faculty, he's at the Faculty of Academic Affairs and Research at the Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center. Uh, good morning, sir. Welcome to uh, GTV Breakfast. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Good morning to you. Can you hear me too? I can hear you loud and clear. What do you make of this video that has gone around uh, showing this police man begging for his life and uh, these uh, criminals basically intimidating our security personnel. Well, first of all, 
thank you very much. Um, what I make of the video is uh, demeaning, first of all, with uh, the uh, professionalism of the Ghana police. Having seen this, it means there's something wrong with uh, the aspect of training. When we talk about training, we talk about morals of the Ghana police. Regards to the youth there saying they have paid, paid or given. Uh, oh, the line seems to be breaking. Can you hear me? You keep going in and out. We'll clear up the line and get back to the good doctor to get his insights on. He was talking about the training of the Ghana Police mm. um, Service personnel. So we'll try and clear up that line and then get back to him as soon as possible. We're going to run through the headlines while we try and get back, uh, Doctor, on the line. Daily Graphic, we have uh, the headlines being Parliament passing three revenue bills. There will be a conversation on that at 8.30. Thelma and her guests will be looking at that. Free SHS policy must focus on skills development, says Professor A. Suman. And BPA, as well as Bui Sugar Limited, have set up a one district, one factory. Uh, factory. And BPA is uh, hmm, is the Bui Power Authority. Okay. Uh, Ad Garanta System. MPs against sole use of Ghana card for voter registration and political analysts and smaller parties agree. Okay. Ghanaian Times. Gangsters attack police. That's our big story. Seize magazine, mobile phones, four grabbed. Pictures there of the men with their faces blurred. Um, Speaker declares Kumewu seat vacant upon the passing of the MP last week. I will prioritize party needs, says Dr. Dufour of the NDC. And um, another story on the three newly passed tax bills, which are supposed to rake in four billion CDs annually. Um, the finder. IMF deal. Revenue bills passed. Last hurdle is bilateral. Eurobond creditors agreement. Okay. Uh, talking of police, uh, a good police officer has left the service to, uh, to head parliament, public affairs. Her name is Superintendent Ifia Tenge. Picture of her smiling. Finder is there for you. Um, Karaga MP Dr. Amin Adam supports 600 women with interest free loans and a couple of headlines like that in the news. So, those are a couple of headlines that we have here for you. Um, I don't think we're going to be getting back to Dr. Joke anytime soon. So I just want to find out from you, gentlemen, uh, what's on your mind, first of all? Uh, I'll start with Dr. Jinde. On my mind, Parliament. Mm -hmm. A lot of things went on there. Eh? It okay. was a very eventful week mm -hmm. for Parliament. And very interesting. I was watching it, looking at it with the eyes of a journalist. Okay. And uh, you see, all the three bills that were passed, the tax bills, you know, initially the minority made us to understand that they were not going to pass that mm -hmm. after they've, they've, given us their, uh, they've given us our first disappointment mm -hmm. by uh, approving the uh, president's nominees. Mm -hmm. You know, they made a whole lot of noise. We are not going to do, we are not going to allow it, it's very bloated. And they, even the, 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 the minority uh, leader came out boldly that they were prepared to stop it. But uh, when the results came out, I realized that he was not in charge of his own caucus. He lost the plot. I see they voted that way because they were, you know, the vote they gave in respect of the, uh, the, 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 the ministerial uh, nominees, it was a protest vote. Yeah. Because if you look at the genesis before uh, the, 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 the vote took place, there was a directive from the general secretary commanding them, <laughs> directing them to act in a certain manner. You know, these are not school kids. These are members of parliament representing constituents. So if you are dealing with them, your language should be very polite, decorous, and appealing. But if you just give instructions, you direct, <laughs> they will do otherwise. Mm. So it was a protest vote. And it also shows uh, the rift between the leadership of the party and then the, leadership, the, the members of parliament. In one breath, it was a protest vote. In another breath, I also think that they voted according to your, their conscience, which you all expect anyway. These are the two sides of the argument. So when they failed Ghanaians in that aspect, mm -hmm. and they came out again, oh, we are not going to uh, pass these three bills. They raised their expectations, gave us a lot of hope. You see, CAF, 
It's good to give hope, eh? but it is wrong to give. It's not proper to give the false hope to people mm. which you know that you cannot fulfill. So when it came out that they passed the bill, the, the, the three bills again, people started asking, are these people we can trust? I'm not saying that they should have voted against it because those bills, we needed them to be able to go through the IMF process. Mm. They were necessary bills. But if you knew that we were going to approve it, why give us this false hope? It means you are just playing on our minds. And as a result, they will have a very serious problem with credibility when it comes to taking them serious. But you see, the vote they took, it was give and take, eh? because they also want to ensure that their position on the CI, which is yet to be laid, is also taken into consideration. So the MPP said, okay, oh. we'll let you have your input, and then you also give us the three taxes. So it was horse trading. So I would say it was politics of convenience, not conviction. One says, allow me to pay my th three tax bills, and then I also give you, uh, give you some leeway when it comes to the new CI that is supposed to be laid before parliament. But if you don't give them the leeway, leeway then what happens? The, if they, don't, if if, they if did they not break, give the leeway... If the majority breaks the agreement, what happens? What can they do? They break what agreement? You say you allow uh, vote help us pass this bill and mm -hmm. then we, we do this you see the other side is that even if the, 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 the majority has said no mm -hmm. when it came when it comes to the uh, 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 to the ci mm -hmm. the minority could not have done anything because the requirement is that it has to be laid 21 certain days so that if nobody raises any objection it becomes law okay. but if you have any objection to be able to overturn it you need to test majority all right. of yeah. all members of parliament. Yeah. It means the NDC will require 48 members of MPP to be able to reverse or stop the CI mm -hmm. from taking effect. So it could have been a dandy, but you see, we are in an era where we need to compromise. We need to build consensus. Because we, have, we need a lot of consensus building. I think that is what informed the minority caucus in parliament, just to give away. But you see, people are re misreporting the whole thing. It is not the CI that has been rejected. What they put before them was a draft. Because they wanted parliament to have an input so that in the long run, when it comes back to parliament in the form of the, 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 the CI proper, there will be input in it. There will be input in it. Okay. So if you hear journalists saying that CI has been rejected, those journalists, they need some level of education. And that's why we are happy to have you here, Dr. Jinde. It was just a draft. <laughs> <laughs> just a draft. It was just a draft. A draft is not a CI. <laughs> One time. Thank you. Thank you for that education. <laughs> Let me just jump back to the lines to speak to Dr. Doke, and I'll come back to you uh, okay. right here in the studio. You're watching GTV Breakfast. We are just coming back to that hot news about those police um, officers who were seen in the video uh, really just begging for life. It appears that they, are, they have some involvement with these uh, guys, these criminals, and uh, four arrests have been made. The gang leader is still on the run. What are the implications as far as security um, and training of police officers uh, is concerned? On the line, security analyst and lecturer at the Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center, Dr. Victor Doke. Can you hear me, um, Doc? Yes, sir. Gr here. Great stuff. So you were talking about uh, lack of, I mean, having to look again at the kind of training we give our police officers. Please expand on that point. Yes, I was talking about that. Um, now, you look at the recruitment processes right from the beginning and how you can assess these individuals who you want to recruit. Now, you need to factor in the moral aspect also, but it seems that we don't normally do that. And going forward, that's one of the suggestions that they can look at, factoring in moral standards of these individuals by assessing their whereabouts, what they did before, and, and, and how they want to now be, uh, be part of the police service. Now, going to the video now, first of all, the meaning, and it also confirms to most people and most researchers that have come out to say that the police service is somewhat corrupt. Now, how do they redeem their image per this video? You could clearly see the policeman has some engagement prior with these guys. Right? Mm -hmm. And now it has got into this stage. Now, what really happened? Did he receive any sum before and he wanted more? Those are the questions that need to be asked. 
Now they are investigating the matter. Well, I hope they find real answers and real quickly. So going forward, what can we do as a state institution uh, looking at the police service? Now, how do we ensure that these patrol team members are well equipped enough? They have numbers going on. Numbers you need to go on patrol. Looking at the numbers, these guys were outnumbered, and anything could have happened. What if they, they took out, they took the rifle and started to shoot the police? Hmm. That would have been another case. We are having a situation where the youths are somewhat on rampage with regards to demonstrations and all that. Now you know the Galamse area. These guys are also armed. These guys are involved in rituals to protect themselves when going to dig for these minerals. So one has to be careful when dealing with them. But this clearly shows there is somewhat of connection between these gentlemen and the police. And going forward, we need to look at that. How to separate professionalism from personal issues so we do not have issues of conflict of interest. And then for the police service, their image would be redeemed because people do not trust the service when it comes to these issues. And the service has been deemed per findings and then this video evidence this cannot be a quick fix can it it can't be a fix it, it cannot i agree but then have we, we need to start from somewhere mm. now these two gentlemen these police personnel what what will be done to them for us no that can start the process of building the standards and morals of the of, of, of personnel and redeeming the image of the police service when it comes to corruption has been tapped by researchers all over and, and findings so we need to start from somewhere start with these two gentlemen and let's see what happens how do you think the morale of um the good police officers in the system how will their morale be be affected by this well it, it's going to be very damning for them they i'm sure wherever they are looking at this they will say what always preaching about it's going to dampen the spirits of those in the service, those who are having the desire to join the service, and those who are even serving on the professional standards bureau, wanting to address such issues. Now, this offers them an, an opportunity to look at the modalities of formalities mm -hmm. in the service that is existing and build more on it. Otherwise, we'll still have the same situation running over and over again. Dr. Doke, we'll leave you here. Thank you so much. She's a security Thank analyst you. and a lecturer at the Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center, offering his insights on issues of morale and training for uh, officers in the Ghana police. What are your thoughts? What are your feelings? What emotions ran through you when you saw this video? Let us know. Send us a WhatsApp message, 055-556-1034. Be unbiased towards short and crisp messages. If you send me a thesis, uh, I'll just read the beginning and the end. <laughs> like a good, a good lecturer does. <laughs> uh, talking of lectures, I have two of them here. Mm. Uh, the Professor Bruce. Yes. Yes. Uh, you've already had your, 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 your thoughts on this. If you have anything else you want to add to this, yeah, I'll I be happy. Two, but I don't two, know what's on your mind, actually. Two, also. I have two issues on my mind. All right. One is uh, we must take a cue from the Bible because it holds the foundation of what we do now and the consequences thereafter. You see, when King Solomon died, the people of Israel came together and installed his son Rehoboam on the throne. The people were led by Jeroboam and they went to Rehoboam and said, please, when your father Solomon was a king, he placed so many tasks on us and we are tired of paying those taxes. Now that you are a young man, and you have replaced your father. Reduce those taxes so that Israel will be happy with you. And your kinship will last longer. He said, okay, I've heard you. So he went to his peers and said, this is what these living ancestors were advising me to do. That my father was charging them so much so I should reduce the taxes for them. He said, go ahead and tell them. If my father Solomon was charging you five CDs per bottle of beer. Now that I am a king, almighty Rehoboam, I will charge you 15 CDs, whether you like it or not. 
The people say, okay, no, fine. Who say anything? He went and he sent his uh, commissioner for revenue. Now Odaram. Nigeria, <laughs> Odaram. <laughs> he went to collect the tax. You know what happened? They stoned him to death. And when Rehoboam heard that his commissioner for entire revenue was stoned to death, he fled from the throne in Jerusalem and ran elsewhere. I'm quoting for 2 Chronicles chapter 10 from verse 1 to 19. It's there. So my question is that, you see, <laughs> already what has happened to the e levy? It has been stoned to death already. Because we projected we are going to get about 6 billion or so. We never realized that. Now these three new times are also coming. I pray that uh, what happened to Jeroboam, Rehoboam will not happen to us. Because already the people are saying we are tired, 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 tired. So let this uh, Second Chronicles chapter 10 from verse 1 to verse 19 be our guide. That when the taxes are so much, it's likely the people may revolt. It's a food for thought for us. Now, I was invited to attend a, a program in Takwa. So when I was traveling between Takwa and Takwa, I saw to my left at a point on the journey a huge, dense, dark green forest of rubber plantation. Yes. And I saw the gutter on the scion of all the trees with a cap place under it to harvest the white creamy liquid which was oozing out of this scion. So I asked myself, is this the raw material which is used for making car tires and other plastic products? I say yes. So this morning I want to appeal to GPRT, VIP, uh, concerned drivers union that they must come together go to Europe and bring someone to come and establish car manufacturing tire here in Ghana because they use so many CDs to exchange the dollar to import the same thing for the raw material here already that is my plea to them if they cannot do so I think there are some individuals they can approach to help them to establish uh, car manufacturing tire and other plastic products in Ghana. They can approach uh, Mr. Ibrahim Mahama. He is a guru in establishing industries. Mr. Kojo Impiani is there. Our Honorable Minister of Finance is also there. He is an investment man. And all this. Mr. Alan Chiramatin, they, they can bring these people together so that we establish a car tire manufacturing company in Ghana. Go to Abuso or Kayashi. All the stores in which we see all these tires, the raw material is from Ghana, but made in Japan. You never see any written made in Ghana on it. Why are we doing this to ourselves? And we are crying the city dollar is not in our favor, and therefore keep on rising, rising, rising. Because drivers, if they cannot buy the brand new tires, we are in trouble. They are going for the second hand ones. When you are speeding, bam, it blasts off. My final appeal is to the Ghana Highways Authority. You see, the two boots are built in a way that they cannot stand the constant vibration of the speedy cars. Now they are all becoming a dangerous uh, statue. If you don't take time, one of them will collapse this, this. If you go to Biposu, the old one is there. It's getting rusted or it has rusted, but it's still standing there. The cars are moving shim, shim, and it's shaking. Before we realize, it will collapse. The new one that they are about, so they could should collapse the old one. The one at the motorway here is also showing, showing signs of uh, deterioration. Either they will go and fortify them or demolish them. The senior one is an eyesore. The Chupuli one is an eyesore. The one going to waste our one is an eyesore. So if you don't have time to use them anytime soon, please, let's go and collapse them. Otherwise, it may collapse on moving vehicle and we can think of the possible havoc that it will cause. Thank you very much. So you've talked about taxes, mm -hmm. tires, mm -hmm. and tow boots. Yes. All the T's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have made it like that. Thank you very much. That's a good one. <laughs> uh, Dr. Jinde, anything else on your mind? You spoke about the interesting times in Parliament with respect to the voting 
um, on the revenue bills. Uh, anything else on your mind? That no, you want I want to, to add that uh, mm -hmm. if, if Parliament agrees that uh, the EC should not use the Ghana card mm -hmm. as the sole means of identification, mm -hmm. the EC can still go ahead and then use that card as the sole means of identification. But there's a law back in it. Mm. Go to the National Identity Register Reg Regulation 2012, LI 2111. It talks about the mandatory use of the Ghana card. That if you want to open a bank account, the use of the Ghana card is mandatory. You apply for a passport, the use of the Ghana card is mandatory. A driver's license. And if you go to the J, registration of voters. So to me, the Electoral Commission is only enforcing what the law says. Go and read LI 2111. Who passed this law? Parliament. So to me, they are turning the law upside down. I'm not saying that in terms, because times have changed, if there's a need to build a consensus so that we could include an exceptional clause that when, when it comes to the voter registration card, maybe we can make some changes to allow for the guarantor system. Mm -hmm. But that law has not been amended. It has not been repealed. It has not been changed. So the law says mandatory use of the Ghana card and then registration of voters is among the list where the mandatory use of the Ghana card is required. So if they want us to make some changes, Perhaps we can make some amendments, but as far as the amendment or the changes have not been made, the Ghana card, if you want to acquire it, the use of the, uh, if you want to register for, uh, uh, to do any voter registration, the Ghana card is mandatory. Kavui, you are the English people. I don't know what mandatory means. <laughs> well, in, 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 in Ghanaian English, you say by force. By force, mm. mandatory. So, Composing. if we are not going to make exceptions for mm -hmm. voter registration, now you have to any bank to open a bank account. I say, oh, I don't have any bank account, but I know very famous journalists, Kafui, uh, 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 Telma, so can I call them to come and guarantee for me? Do you think the bank will agree? They want my Ghana card. They want your Ghana card. <laughs> so, why should we make exceptions for the voter registration? If we think that there's a need for us to do that, let's amend the law. Right. But without that, Parliament itself has turned the law upside down. I teach law, so I'm not saying it's not good for Ghana, but that is the legal position now. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, the EC itself has not been able to make this argument that we are implementing mm -hmm. what the law requires. They, they, they did not make that argument. But me, I'm just an ordinary lecturer. I can only shout and scream in my classroom. No, you can educate. <laughs> you can educate. And you're giving us good education. Mm. And so, we are grateful. So, so I think they should have a look at it. They should have a look at it. Okay, awesome. Beef and uh, talking of parliament, it's in today's Ghanaian Times, and there's a hot conversation that was sparked or reignited with the arrival of the Vice President of the United States uh, last week. So the Parliamentary Committee recommends passage of the LGBTQ plus bill. And this committee is the Constitutional, Legal, and Parliamentary Affairs Committee recommending the passage of this bill. It's up, the full name is the Proper Human Sexual Rights and Ghanaian Family Values Bill 2021. They said they have uh, undertaken the hearing of memoranda on the bill and noted that the majority of Ghanaians uh, were in favor of the passage of the bill. They, however, said there were significant human rights concerns which the bill, uh, which, with the bill, which were worthy of consideration pursuant to Article 12.1 of the Constitution, which imposes on all organs of the state the duty to respect and uphold the fundamental human rights uh, enshrined in the 1992 Constitution. So, um, a couple of amendments include a change in the title of the bill to now read Human Sexual Rights and Family Values Bill 2021. And a couple of other things on the heels of the liberation of the U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris by the Speaker of Parliament. Uh, he, he spoke quite strongly um, about LGBTQ issues. I quote, he said, I feel very strongly about the importance of supporting freedom and supporting the rights. Um, no, she said, I feel very strongly about the importance of supporting freedom and supporting the fighting for equality among all people and that all people should be treated equally. I also say that, that this LGBTQ is an issue that we consider uh, to be a human rights issue and that will not change. Uh, but the speaker at the second breakfast prayer meeting 
of Parliamentary Christian Fellowship on the theme Praying for the Nation in Parliament uh, said Parliament will not be at the beck and call of any external powers. Uh, quoting him, he said, Mr. Speaker said, what the Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris, did yesterday should not be tolerated. That is undemocratic. What is democracy? That someone should have to dictate to me what is good and what is bad. Because we have decided to devalue ourselves and go begging. Come on, we have more than enough. God has created more than enough for every person. The bill will be passed. The Speaker assured. Let me give you some, tight, some, some highlights of this bill. So it's a 25-clause private member's bill. What does a private member's bill mean, my, my lawyer? You see, uh, initially, mm -hmm. until the time of Mike Okwe, mm -hmm. all bills should initiate from the executive. Mm -hmm. But during the time of Mike, uh, my, uh, Professor Mike Okwe, mm -hmm. they made the amendment that an individual can also initiate a bill okay. in parliament. Normally, it was only left to the executive. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 if a, a particular ministry want to introduce a bill, they will do their consultation, mm -hmm. go to the attorney general for advice, then the, uh, the, 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 the government will introduce that bill. Mm -hmm. okay. But now, a private member can okay. also introduce a bill. And okay. this is exactly what uh, the Honorable St. George has done. All right. But before Mark Okwe, he could be during the time of Mike Okwe, he couldn't have done that. Okay. Because that, that, during that time, it was only reserved for the executive to introduce bills. So we are you. making progress, making in, progress. Our group, in, our, in our parliamentary democracy. Indeed. Highlights of this uh, bill. So it will proscribe LGBTQ plus and related activities. It will proscribe propaganda of, advocacy for, uh, or promotion of, now here comes a long one, LGBTQIAAP plus and as uh, related activities among others. I need, to, I need to go and ask Chad GPT exactly what all of this stands for. I know some of them, but not all. Among other things, the bill proposes a jail term for people who engage in same-sex uh, activities. If passed, various forms of support for the LGBTQ plus activities would be criminalized and offenders could face up to five years in jail. Now, these are the people who are championing it. It's been championed by Nigo Papam MP Samuel Nati George and seven other lawmakers. They are... Uh, Imano Koshi Bedzra, MP for Ho West, Reverend John Intim Fojo, who is uh, Deputy Minister for Education and MP for Asin South, Al Hassan Sayubu Suyini, MP for Tamale North, Rita Na Odole Sowa, MP for La Dadekotopong, Helen Ajwa Ntosu, MP for Krachi West, and Roxon Nelson Eche Komi, Dafa Mekpo, MP for South Dai. So the House will be expected to debate the report when they return from the Easter break. Okay. We'll take a break from our in-studio conversations to go to Jay, who is on the motorway, which was referenced not too long ago by Professor Bruce. Jay, where exactly are you on the motorway? What can you report on for us this morning? What are you keeping an eye on? Jay, good morning. Come in. Thank you so much, Kaufi. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another exciting edition of Keep an Eye on Hashtag GTV Breakfast. Uh, so this morning, we're reporting live from the Accra Summer Motorway, like you rightly said. Uh, we decided to take a uh, drive around town this morning and drive in these parts and just take a look at uh, things. So uh, there is, this is one of the fastest connections between Accra and Tema for most commuters who ply this road. Unfortunately, it's fraught with a number of challenges. Uh, one of the chief of them, um, among them being the fact that there are a number of potholes along the stretch. And unfortunately, the highways authorities have tried a number of times to fix these potholes, but unfortunately, the fix just doesn't take. And you realize that uh, for most commuters, when they get to these sections of the road, You'll be going on top speed for a while and then you get here and suddenly you have to slow down and you have not careful that's when you run into another vehicle or you veer off uh, the road now, some of these portals are quite deep and unfortunately if you're on top speed like that and you go into the portal that's when uh, the, it may even derail your tires completely and then you go off and veer off uh, into the bush uh, the, the motorway as such shouldn't be uh, this dangerous. Uh, in fact, uh, fashion after the autobahn in Germany, there are a number of uh, issues on the motorway, including the fact that uh, sometimes some vehicles stop uh, on the sides of the road, and that also causes uh, some accidents. Some pedestrians cross indiscriminately. Uh, you also find that sometimes you may not know what the, the driver ahead of you is going to do, 
And looking at all these challenges that are on the motorway, you'll be surprised that these uh, this portal shouldn't be a part of the situation. And so this morning we are here making an advocacy again to the roads and highways authorities that the developing situation is such that uh, it's getting quite crazy for the vehicles who ply the road over here. And unfortunately, they need a fix as soon as possible. Uh, most of the who have uh, driven past us this morning have been remarking on the fact how unsafe uh, the road is. Uh, including, and one of them even jokingly said, okay, I'm not certain if it's a joke or not. He jokingly said uh, the road minister even uses this road on his way to work. <laughs> if that's the case, uh, then once again, we'd just like to appeal to uh, Honorable Mr. Kwesi Amakwata that he comes and help uh, alleviate the plight of road commuters who are coming from Tema and heading uh, towards Accra. The situation is quite untenable for them. And, uh, and, this, and the thing is to find a fix a permanent fix for the situation because you realize the motorway was done with concrete when it was first constructed back in the day but i believe anytime they try to fix the portals they use asphalt and uh, it just it just doesn't fit in with the original concrete and that's when you realize that it causes this wear and tear and even the patches you see at the moment there are a few of them you realize it's also sinking in and you know that in due course when the rainy season starts uh, when it starts excessively when it starts raining excessively those patches are also going to go off uh, completely. Uh, it's uh, quite uh, the motorway. <laughs> it shouldn't be the, uh, once again the motorway shouldn't be this dangerous. And if we can alleviate the situation for road commuters, then we should do that uh, as, as as quickly as possible and not wait for something bad to happen. And then we come and say, oh, we should have fixed uh, these portals because these these portals you see function as death traps. So once you fall into it, once you're not careful, you veer off the road, you run into another vehicle, you lose your life. And we have to think about all the families who lose loved ones on the Accra Tama motorway. We want a situation when you hear about the motorway, it should be good things. Not the fact that something terrible, an accident or something, something terrible of the sort has happened. So once again, we just like to appeal to the roads and highways authorities to come and find a permanent solution to the recurring portals on the Accra Tama motorway. There's a report for you, we have for you via the Accra Tama motorway. Back to you in the studio. Na good day. I want to say it in, in Mo. Thank you. Jam jam. I love it. And then in, in, in Gonja, for my, my Bamboy people, what would you say? Uh, Thank you. Uh, uh, I forgot. To. Asanka Shun. <laughs> I forgot. <to>. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know how I have to say thank you in Gonja. I think it's Asan Kishun. I think so. I think so. Yes. All right. Thank you. Let's go. Messages. Hmm. More messages coming in. 055-556-1034. Let's go. 730. Good morning to you. The police as an institution was established to maintain peace and order and to protect lives and property with our traditional communities. We, the young adults and other age groups, must do anything possible to protect the integrity of the police by not attacking them in any form because they've been established to serve our interests, but not their interests. Aaron. Sebali. 70% of government revenue is used to pay debts and later becomes a burden on government to manage other government's development projects. You're talking about the three new revenue bills, and you think they are a step in the right direction. Musa. Why do you, and your, your views are, why do you think, you say, why is President Akufuado behaving and said Americans are looking for weapons of mass destruction in Iraq? And you say, God save Ghana. Uh, we're not trying to deny any society human rights and we won't accept any society inflicting our religious and ethnic beliefs in the quest of, for human rights. All right. Remember, messages are your responsibility. This is a new form of terrorism. The earlier the government begins to restructure internal security issues, the better. Adra Henkel, yes, talking about those four police officers. And those four criminals who are attacking the police have been arrested. Good morning. You believe the eighth parliament of the fourth republic is the worst so far? You think they don't care about what their constituents or Ghanaians want? Mm -hmm. And you think you urge them to be prudent and do the needful because Ghana de deserves better? Manyo Takman Accra. Uh, well, you're sending our happy birthday greetings to Dr. Kwabna Sapon of Cape Coast. May the Lord keep his light on him and all the time. From Jimmy Ebo Grant. Tadi, Mr. Bote. Uh, you, you want us to bring some education on the dangers of anal sex? Okay, we need the doctors now, George Kaswa. Okay, there are health issues there. Patrick, uh, uh, you think it's an old video? Uh, the gang men were more than the police, so the police men could not stand them, so they had to surrender and go back to their station and prepare for proper arrest. 
When the police went to arrest him, they didn't meet the one who recorded the video, but arrested the rest. When the guy arrived home, he also decided to release the video to tarnish the policeman's integrity after knowing that he's a wanted person. I think that's the best way anyone could do to save his life and prepare for a proper arrest. Okay. All right. You seem to know a lot. Please report yourself to the police. We must understand that the voting in Parliament is won by numbers. Stop blaming the minority. Yeah, they did 136 votes. It was 136 versus 137. Majority won that one. It's numbers. Salma. Good morning, able panelists. Scary the way security personnel are being attacked. What is most scary is how they are attacked in their uniforms. Wow. We earnestly have to look at the police academy. We need to flush out all the greedy extorting officers before they are graduated out of the system. Bash Gumbo. As a matter of fact, after watching the video, I felt very bad. What could the police officer have done under such a dehumanizing circumstance? Hmm. And you think our economic woes continue on the passage of the three revenue bills? That conversation happens right after this. Ah, more. Training of police officers needs international standards. Meets international standards. It's the bad human attitude and greed. That's what the IGP should work on. If we enlist into the security service agencies on political lines, this is what we shall harvest. That's your, your interpretation. The, cap, the encounter between the police and those guys is not anything new in Western region, especially at Asankragua, Wasap, or Kopong. The police officers always go to the Galamse site every time. Wow. That's a serious allegation there. You know, the acting was like revenue, pseudo revenue collectors. That's serious. We need to have people check on that. The police must come clear on the allegations of extorting money from those who rogue Galamseyers. Hope there'll be no cover ups. All righty. Okay. Uh, Someone is in a good, a happy mood, giving us emojis. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Thank God it's Monday. Akazabre. You think the video is a propaganda video and not else? You want to believe, you don't want to believe that the gun the policeman was holding had no bullet in it. Looking at the confidence level of the attackers, you don't need any advice from anybody. You strongly believe that they are film actors and not Galamsey operators. Really? They want to say that the government has lost control over the Galamsey fight, so no security agents should come to, the busy, to, come to them. All right, you're, you're being quite uh, sarcastic and tongue-in-cheek, family tongue-in-cheek. Uh, you think arrogance and disrespect of functionaries of this government is what is putting us in all our problems? going to move from taxation to production. What happened to that mantra, says Alaji Hamza, pig farm. Ishmael, the police institution is embedded in a way with so many men without integrity. And the earlier they work on the images, the better. My boy who has just completed university was in my car when he was in JHS and saw a policeman demanding some money from me. And since then, my son has developed some uh, dislike, in quotes, for the police as an institution as he keeps on seeing them collecting money openly from the drivers. We saw the vibrancy of the new IGP when he assumed office, but the vigor is dying. The earlier he restates himself, the better. Obo Sika, love your name. Morning, morning, morning. About the Galamse issue, please open the video below and see it's bad. Here at Burma Camp, God have mercy. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, this water, okay, water that there's not, it's dirty water flowing from the taps, I guess. All right. It's too much data. Okay. But I see, I get your point. Thank you. Voila. Infiltration of unpatriotic and greedy persons into our sector is making it hard for the enforcement of the laws. The reason why the Galamse guys are becoming powerful in our community, they have the support of some of the chiefs and political powers. Yeah. I don't support what the Galamse boy guys did to the policeman. PK from Wala Fashe. Please tell the lecturer who's supporting the sole use of the Ghana card to think about those of us who have been following the card for more than six months without getting it. What is a law when it punishes the innocent? So sad. All right, so he, he thinks that you should also think about those who haven't gone the card yet. Please, with the toe boots, come back. Will, uh, uh, will the toe boots come back after being destroyed? Which monies are going to be used to repair them again? Says BB. IGP has done a lot to change the face of Ghana Police Service. However, it's incumbent on the police officers to live up to expectation. The Ghanaian paper from Abdullah Abdul Razak in Tamale, Titi's town. That video is sad to say the least. It casts a huge slur on the whole police institution. Earlier, we streamlined the recruitment process. The better it will be for Mother Ghana and posterity. Good morning, Aiden Craft from Imprayesu. Gilbert Dunu. I love your name. Dunu means eat. It's a command in ever. Mm. Dunu, eat. Uh, our MPs should concentrate on development issues and address the corruption in society. What, what consenting adults do in private does not require legislation, says Yao in Accra. Fred says, Good morning, enjoying the show. Particularly the humility with which Professor Bruce presents his analysis. He was my psych lecturer at MUCG. He's been my man. Greetings to him this morning. 
one of your old students, Professor Bruce. Okay. Uh, as for the issues on attack of the police at Axim Galancé site, I'm not sure the story is complete. There could be more to it. I urge the police admin to try and get every detail. Uh, please get an investigative journalist to fish out the closet homosexuals amongst the other ones, the ones vehemently spewing hate against gays. You will find out that most are hiding in their closet and doing foolish things. Why is everyone just thinking about sex? Everyone chooses to be homosexual, says FC. Elijah Dawuda. Draft bills for taxes. Congratulations to customers for exceeding their revenue targets for the year 2022. Thanks for knowledge sharing. Uh, on the um, media bills in Parliament by our lawyer journalist on the show. Thank you very much. Kudos to you, Dr. Uh, Jinde, yeah. the man who wears so many hats. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Ghana, 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 Usi, yeah. And everybody said, Oh, where are the Ghanaians? Yeah, yeah. Ghana, oh. Yeah. Ghana, oh. Yeah. We, yeah. I, <laughs> I like the dream, man. <laughs> <laughs> Our future. Hey, Charlie. Good morning, Calf. Let's please tell the Akufuado government to use the electoral polls on this LGBTQI plus for a yes or no voting to de determine what the citizens want and to stop pushing uh, all this Togbe into our troops. Okay. You know, nobody wants to eat Togbe when they don't want to eat Togbe. I think the police need better training. Yeah, that's it. Mask says, Good morning, Calf and Pandas. I think the police service must have a system that would test their loyalty before graduation. Elijah Hump has come back again. My brother, the way you rush in reading the messages doesn't make sense to the public. <laughs> oh, really? Just listening to you now, I read my message to the end, but trust me, I did not even hear a word from you. What I keep on hearing is bra, bra, bra. <laughs> my mother, my brother, Ghana is hard, so we are spending our credits to contribute to the problem. Please, we love you in the program. Don't disappoint us, my brother. Alaji Hamza, Pick Farm. Salam alaikum, Alaji. That's all I can say. <laughs> Thank you for the feedback. <laughs> and we are done. All the messages are done. And we are out of time. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Kweku Anani Jinde and Professor Daniel Bruce for your insights. I'm going to clear my throat and I sing a song. Just two minutes. And it's for all those who went to Infancy uh, Secondary School. Okay, So they are 147 years this year. Mm -hmm. So this is their school song. For all the saints who from their labors rest, who thee by faith before the world confessed, thy name, O oh Jesus, be forever blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout out to all the Kabuchi guys, man. Enjoy your 147 years of existence as a school. More years to you. We've got conversations on revenue, taxes, money. Ga, Kudi, Chobo, Cash, Lajan. Everything is happening here with Thelma. Don't go anywhere.